It's going to be intense week. This week is really all about fixing you. You realize that. Also getting the foundation under your feet and what we use and how we reimprint memories. And also the techniques that I use that I'm going to be teaching you uh, this the next couple of days. These are some of the things that I use on my clients, such as we do the, the happy journal. Um, very important. You know, as you, as you can probably tell from the beginning of this, this seminar is that we're talking about basically the law of attraction. You are a law of attraction magnet. What you currently have, your messes, your miseries, your positive, your negatives are all built by you. And by your programmings in which and what you held within you and hold within you and you create. Now just like you can go and read a book and you can go and study a book and you do your, 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 your memory stuff and you rehearse over and over again, you can program yourself for something better. And that's what, you know, you can do, you know, like a lot of people done the affirmation stuff. They tried it. And it didn't work for them. For some people, it did. Because the, the differences that makes the difference is what you call the unconscious resources. And are they in alignment with it? Does it match their current system? And sometimes you can, you can work hard enough and you can override the other stuff that's in there. And it takes more work. And so one of the things I think of is I say, won't you just make it easy? Inoculate the resistance. It makes it a whole lot easier and a lot less work. You could do it in one round and all of a sudden you produce instead of uh, 30 days. You know, sometimes you have an affirmation. It only happened once and you got it. Every time you see that, you're zapped with whatever that represents. You know, a look, a sound, a finger. So it's, it's just like that, you know. All right. So again, we have, we have affirmations that pop in this fast just because of a situation. A look that happened a long time ago or an experience or the bell that rang and created an unconscious link to it. So what we want to do is you can do the exact same way. You know, Heather said she, she, did, she don't even remember the session. Yesterday was the first time she saw her session. And she goes, and she goes maybe that's why I have a pig day. You know, now, you know, because I put a pig, I said, you, you love pigs? She goes, yes. <laughs> so maybe her unconscious used that resource later on and went and bought her a pig, a little pot belly pig. We don't know. Maybe so, maybe not. But there is some weirdness to our unconsciousness. Um, because believe it or not, a lot of your career decisions and your relationship decisions are built from past experiences that you don't remember. You know, this one lady who came to see me, she, um, uh, she came to see me, and of course, I'm doing seminars there in Oklahoma City, here in Oklahoma City at the local church, Unity Church. I, I rented their hall on Tuesdays, and um, <clears throat> she booked a session, and so she, I started working on her, and, and you know, I'm just getting a normal intake, and she goes, I'm a madam, and of course, when I thought madam, I thought she just took care of other people's children. And then, <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's what I thought. So later on, we go back. He goes, Robert, you don't understand. I said, what do you mean? Men pay me to beat them. I go, what? Yeah, I beat them, and I make them wear my clothes and stand them in the corner. Or in the closet. I go, seriously? People pay for that? <laughs> <laughs> I give them your card. <laughs> By the way, that's not the first time I've worked with somebody with this interesting career. But here's the bizarre thing about this. Here's the real bizarre thing about this. So I'm working on her, and we're dealing with some of her trauma. Now, her trauma, her hurts, her pains, whatever it is. And then we're dealing with an uh, experience where her father was very physically abusive. And this day, he was beating her with the belt. And all of a sudden, she goes, and it sexually stimulated me. And then all of a sudden it goes, bonk, bonk. the sexual stimulation created her a career in her future. Unconsciously, I don't even know why she chose it. You know, we talk about Kathy when she married her, her husband. Who did he look like? She didn't consciously say, hey, I'm going to marry him who looks like my stepdad who abused me. Her unconscious goes, hey, 
I resonate with this guy. Something in my heart says, this is the right one. Right? Unconsciously. You do un weird unconscious things all the time. You pick the same stuff you've always picked. You feel the same feelings you always feel. And just like today, I jump in my car. I've got the music going. And when I'm almost to the seminar, I realize I don't do seminars there anymore. <laughs> I said, oh, shit. So I had to turn around and come to this seminar place. <laughs> so here it is. We've been doing things. I've been going there for years. And I was on autopilot. My unconscious minds and I were just flowing along. By the way, it's the same basic path I go to work, too, or my office. All right? So our brains does this to us. And so when you begin to understand that you're unconscious is the smarter part about you but it doesn't determine what it does for you if it's good or bad it just says this is homeostasis this is how it is this is how we roll and so what we want to do is now create your life by design instead of creating the life by default which means what's already in there it will create so if you don't like what you're currently creating it's now time today to make that decision, haven't you? You've already made that decision to take control, haven't you? And I congratulate you because that's the smartest decision you'll ever make. The decision to be in control of your life. The decision to clean up your head. I had a little session this morning on someone on Skype, not Skype, on Viber. And of course she knew that this thing happened but she was so scared to go there. Because this thing happened and it felt like a knife ripping her insides from her vagina up. But she was so afraid to go there. And she would dabble here and there and I said, listen, your boys, nothing's going to happen because he spends the night over at the next door neighbor. But you're still acting like that little girl that something happened to you in the middle of the night. You've got to clean this up because you're a puppet. The puppet of your past. So we just went there. And we went there. And we went there. And she goes, what time is it? I said, it's time to let it go. <laughs> so again, again, she's been running from it. But here's the weirdness of it all. And I see it all the time. The, it's like the lady who, who's a heroin addict and she's in rehab. She's in rehab. And so one of the things we do is have them write a list of all the bad things. All right? So all the bad things has ever happened to her. And she wrote the last one. And she said, I don't even know why I wrote it on there. It's not so important at all. So the story is, we start working on her. She's a heroin addict. And um, her husband, or boyfriend at the time, <coughs> was, what the hell's the problem with you and this heroin? What's the big deal? Why do you do it? He's never done drugs, so he takes a whiff of it. And it kills him right there in front of her. But that's not the first death that she witnessed. Because years before that, she used to MT, you know, she'd ride with the ambulance. And she was there at line 11, and guess what she saw? Lots of death. But that's not the first one. No. Her mother had cancer, and she's severely in pain. And of course, they're giving her morphine, and she just gave her a little extra, and she died. But that's not the first one. The first one was, and she wrote on the list, she said, that's not important. I don't even know why I wrote it. She's seven years old. And she's there with her grandfather. Her grandfather's on a little hospital bed, and he, she's been taking care of him and talking to him and reading to him. And he asked one day to get me some milk. She did. She came back, and he was dead. It all started right there this little imprint and then she created a whole life of working for finding creating and manifesting what she said didn't mean anything because see she buried it she buried it because she never wanted to go there and she was so afraid at some unconscious level and her great universal law of creation her great law of creation started creating more of what she holds 
if you're afraid to go there and if you don't go there you know what you're saying I like it I love it I want some more of it at some weird level it's strange but this is how the unconscious works so can I encourage you go to the dark places find you a faster tea practitioner and help them clean your head up it's almost like a song clean your head up <laughs> clean your head up you know that song <laughs> I don't think that's really what it says is it no, it works <laughs> so anyway 